This is Alan Patterson. Welcome back to our very special edition of Voices of Time with our special guest and my good friend Teddy Larkin from Bedfield, Mass. That's where we both hail from back in the day. And uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties we had on Teddy's mic uh, in the first set when uh, it was hard to hear him, and hopefully we've uh, addressed that issue. Uh, so, uh, Teddy, um, why don't we talk about that second set, and we would you like to... Uh, Testing, one, hey, two, three. That's great. All right, say it again, say it again. Testing, yeah. one, two, three. That's great. Thanks, Alan. All right, buddy. And um, you want to talk more about Billy uh, Nightshade? Yeah, um, just in case uh, you couldn't hear me, that, that, uh, this whole show is dedicated to Billy Nightshade. Um, and we had some great music by uh, Billy Nightshade, Tim Carroll, Racky Thomas, Tony Joe White, Teddy Larkin, and Mickey Bones. And uh, that last set, uh, Graham Parsons, who I'm a big fan of, and Alejandro, or uh, Tim Carroll, if I could, which is a song that John Prine covered of Tim's. Right. And then we've got um, Alejandro Escovedo, Castanets, and Billy Joe Shaver. Got a funny story to type out Billy Joe Shaver. I'd love to hear it. He uh, was, uh, they did a documentary on him. He had, his son uh, passed away at a young age, um, Eddie, Eddie Shaver. And they made a documentary on uh, Billy Joe. And they premiered it at the Nashville Film Festival. And on break, and Billy was there taking questions and answers at the premiere. And yep. uh, I went up to him and spoke to him. My brother had just passed away. And I said, right. hey, Robbie. Really yeah, I really, yeah, my brother Rob and I said it was, you know, I could identify to that, that movie and your, your last record. And he says, hey, they're all in a better place. That's well, true, isn't it? Well, about six months later, uh, my son Robbie was born, and we're with Billy Nightshade and my, um, Robbie's mother, and we're at the Grand Ole Opry, and Billy's there, and we went over to say hello, and he's like, hey, how you doing? And he, and he put my son in his arms. Oh, that's nice. And I gave... Billy the camera to take a picture of it <laughs> and he took a picture of it but all he got was our torsos <laughs> so so it wasn't a photo op with oh, Billy and after all. <laughs> but two Billys, Billy yeah. Young Shaver and Billy Nightshade. Great story Teddy. And uh, then we had Lou Reed and um, Dirty Boulevard, one of my, my favorites. Of yeah and uh, uh, we went to a, a Lou Reed concert together. You and, and Billy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, down on Lansdowne Street, I think it was Avalon or oh, something. Oh yeah, sure. And I knew the manager and she and she gave me some tickets and we went and Billy would record everything, every concert he went to, he'd record it. And uh, we're at the show and we're listening to the show, but he had never seen uh, Lou before. Right. So I'm going, being a Ted egg, going ba da 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 I know this song, it's great. Well the next day we get a call from the manager of the club and Lou had called the club and said, hey, if you know anybody that has a recording of that show, let us know. And Billy and had we had a recording. He recorded it. But before, <laughs> but so Billy and I went back and listened to the show, and it was all me back. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time that night, but uh, we couldn't send Lou that tape. Uh, that's too bad. Missed then, opportunity. <laughs> and then you had the Gizmos, American yep. Dream, and that was Billy's band from Indiana. And yeah, that we, album came out in 1981. Uh, it's called, um, let me see here. The Gizmos, The American Dream, from Rock and Roll, Don't Come From New York. <laughs> yeah. Great title, 1981. Then you, then you played one of my songs, Happy Crash, and uh, whenever I needed a last verse, Billy was always there, um, and he came up with the last verse. He was your song. songwriting pa he partner. Was, yeah, yeah, he was. He's, so he wrote some great lines, too, because you mentioned the, uh, your dickhead uh, line. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then Mark Frazier, Mark his Frazier. brother. Uh, uh, helped out with that. Yeah, he helped with that one. We're right. going to play that later. Absolutely. And then uh, we had Dobie Gray, and I actually shot pool with him one day at the Sutler. Very cool. In Nashville, Tennessee. And there's a, uh, I think they've re reopened, but the Sutler, um, the bar was purchased by the Everly Brothers. No kidding. And donated to the place. Wow. And awesome. it's actually the bar that George Jones used to, uh, got in trouble driving his John Deere tractor because his wife took away the keys. I remember that story. I didn't know yeah. it was at that bar. That's great. And um, Was and it then, Tammy who took away his keys? Uh, it was a different a wife different after wife that, up. yeah. And then we have, uh, we, you played Rodney Crowell, and I just love Rodney Crowell, and uh, that's all we got. But I know, love is all I need. Really beautiful song. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm going to play some songs. All right, Teddy, you got a favorite verse for the song? Yeah. Great. I want to dedicate this. Let me uh, let me put the Miles Davis off. Put on pause. 
All right. I want to dedicate this to the Somerville Fire Department. Right. And my son Robbie. All right. And his mother Jill. I know Robbie. He's a fine little leaguer. His, uh, I remember his coach said he has a great baseball mind. So that's very. I think cool. you said that. I've read yeah, maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm um, a, a friend of um, one of his friend's mother is a firefighter in Somerville. I and see. Her name is Blanca. And I hope you're listening. You said you would be. <laughs> and this is a song about a fire. And there's a side story to this song. And I think I played it the last time I was on your show. I think you did, yeah. But um, this is about an old girlfriend's mother uh, who lived in Kentucky. And um, long story short, she was friends with the Carter family, and she used to bowl with them. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And that's amazing. She had one uh, keepsake from those days. Was um, Maybell Carter's auto harp. It was wow. a rosewood auto harp. That's unbelievable. And we had it over the fireplace wow. at our apartment. That is amazing, Teddy. <laughs> and uh, we went and saw Johnny Car uh, Johnny Cash, Cash um, in April. Probably the last tour he did. I think I saw that tour too. That yeah. The, um, on I, cha I changed. And once again, it was on Lansdowne Street. Yeah. Oh, I, no, I saw him at the, uh, the on the harbor side actually. Okay, this okay. is on Lansdowne Street and. Um, Travis, my girlfriend, was right. writing notes to June while she was That's on stage. That's unbelievable. And they, we spoke after the show. No kidding. And she goes, "Do you still?" She goes, "I've got your auto harp." That's amazing. And she goes, "And, she, and they reminisce." And um, as much as I miss Travis, mm. I miss that auto harp. Absolutely. <laughs> Travis was a great person. Yeah, I really he was I cool. liked her a lot. <laughs> Yeah. 
dedicate that to Jerry Belgard, who co-wrote that with me. Great bass player from Scary White. I remember Jerry. He's a great yeah. guy. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Thanks. That was on. great, Teddy. Thank you. That was awesome. So what do we got next, man? All right. Uh, we're going to feature a lot of your music next. I'm, be, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll start it off with the song we mentioned, You're a Dick Ted, the version from Fourth and Broad. Hats off to Mark Frazier for this one, man. Yeah, you get some great lines. What's the line that I like so much? I'll change, uh, I'll change with, my ways tomorrow. If you stay with me tonight, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great line. All right, so we're going to go to that. And... Uh, and this is Teddy Larkin, you're a dickhead on Boston Free Radio. <laughs> 